Are you looking? I was just looking what it actually yeah, says, but it says that it's my answer. It's Liverpool FC, that's a football club. <laughs> yeah. ah, is that like this? You can read it better. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I got that because I should wear that. It's dry fit, actually, it's really good. So, <laughs> good material, feels well. Yeah. Hi. Okay, so far. No concern. He's not available. We knew that before. Um, so that's that's great. He didn't train with the team once yet, and we will take a little bit. So it's not the the worst hamstring injury you can have, but it's a hamstring injury, and um, they barely heal in two weeks, and this one didn't as well. Um, we hope he can start. Um, as he's running already, but start ball work maybe early next week, and then we will see, and we'll go from there. And Ryan Grammatch opted not to play for Netherlands under 21 team this week to focus on Liverpool. Have you seen the benefit of that, and will he feature in Wolves? We will see that, the second part of we will see that, but yeah, of course there's a benefit of it. It's just a, a player comes to a new club, um, so he had training sessions here. Um, he could sort everything on a private basis, so if he would do that now this week, um, we have games every three days, let me say like that, so he has a, he knows where he will live, he has a car, he has organized everything around, so for, of course it's a, it's a benefit of that. Um, I understand that the Dutch, um, um, Mr. Reisinger was not happy, or, or, or Ronald Koeman was not happy, I can get that, but the boy is a footballer through and through, wants to play football all the time, and um, he used that that break to, 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 to fix a lot of things which we usually do in a proper rush, so he didn't have to do that. That's f from our point of view obviously good, but he loves playing for Holland, whichever team. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'm sure you're relieved now that the transfer window is closed and you can stop talking about Mo Salah's uh, But you still do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. But is there a fear that it will reignite? You, 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 are, you are not you're kidding me, yeah? A week after the, we closed the transfer window, you asked me about a January transfer window. It's, it's, it's likely that a bid may come in again in January. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you can't wait eh, until December to ask this question. So, we will see what happens until then. Oh, I, I'm not worried in this moment, not at all. I didn't even think about it until you opened that round again. So, um, yeah, no. I, I'm not worried. Um, Jürgen, when you consider the players that left over the summer and now the players that are coming, and the latest being Brian, of course, and you consider your, your midfield options, are you happy with how that option looks now that you've got the ability to do everything that you, you hope that you want to do? Yeah, I'm happy. I, I was happy with our midfield. We had over the years fantastic players, super characters. Uh, real man grew into fantastic from younger players into more experienced players grew in, 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 into each different role. The most successful players we had here at the club for at least since I'm here. Um, and it was a big task and it's a big task to replace these guys. Um, and But I'm happy with what we've got. That's true. I really think we, we brought in good players and we have we had already good players here we had with Curtis, with Harvey, Thiago, obviously, we had already um, Stefan, we had really good players here, and we brought a few on top of that, and um, that's necessary, but um, not easy, and um, so far I think it looks it looks all right, but um, we, we would have loved to, to carry on, obviously, after the Aston Villa game, which was a really good game, could do that, I think 30-odd hours ago, Maka played in Bolivia, landed yesterday morning at 4 o'clock, so um, Lucho at 9 p.m. a.m. Yeah, 9 a.m. yesterday. So um, let's see where we can pick up from there. So um, I didn't see them yet, and um, I will see them today, and then we make decisions about the game tomorrow. Um, but with the quality of the players, I'm really, really happy. The potential app is really good. And um, I love working with them because they are open. It's nice for a coach, obviously, as well. 
for managers well that you that you that you know they didn't hear it already 500 times before so uh, the me some messages are new um, and yeah so it's really exciting in terms of uh, Wolves um, you've had some tight games against them particularly on their home ground in recent years is it a particularly difficult place to go to to get a result with you like, yeah, it is. It is like Premier League. It's Premier League. I don't. I can. If you ask me now, is there any away ground where you like to go and think, "Oh my God, we have the point already"? Um, there is none. But it was for sure not as well. And I have to say, I know they had now. Malhamas and Shaw, um the manager didn't want to lose Matthias Junius late in the window. They lost, they, 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 they lost a few key players, and then you look at the at the lineup and you think, "Wow, that's really quality." Yeah, players. Um, like Wang and, and, and Kalicic don't even start, so um, they have still Neto and, and, and other guys, so it's a really, really good football team. Um, and that's the, the team we prepare for. So we're unlucky, obviously, now early in the season already with, you know, with decisions, which is happens to all of us, but not all these decisions lead them directly to, 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 a, to a bad result. In their case, I think it was like that. Um, so. Yeah, we expect a, a massive fight, and that's what we have to be ready for. Yeah. Um, no, again, John again, quite a wide range of interviews during the international break. Just on the element of Liverpool, um, and one of the things he said that if someone had asked me to stay, I wouldn't. And obviously, it's very it's difficult to leave a place that you love and clearly played so long for. I just wonder if I could get your thoughts on you on can. what. I, I really think I really think it's important to. I I, I didn't read the interview. I only heard in the, uh, first. Then I read it. So, because Tony spoke about it, and I thought, okay, maybe before I have it all tinted by Tony, so I maybe I should make my own opinion. Um, and Hendo Hand, Hendo said the truth in all in all departments. It's that's how it was. So we had our talks. I told Hendo I want him to stay. But we had to talk in these conversations as well about the possibility of not playing regularly. I told him we bring players in and stuff like this. You don't have this talk when, when you about the positive stuff. Oh, Henry, you will play. I cannot have a talk before a season and tell a player you will have 50 games this season, 100 percent, because that's I don't know that. It all depends on performance. And if Henry would have performed, he would have had maybe 50 games. Absolutely fine. Absolutely possible. But in a sp the specific situation with the with the, the, the relationship we had. Um, I saw it important. I thought it's important that we speak really about everything, and that means what happens if, because Hendo is he's a fantastic player. I will love him forever. Super guy, um, but he's not great when he's not playing. Let me say it like that. So Milly was like this when when I arrived here, and Lukas Leva was like this. And you always thought, okay, they're great guys. In the moment they see the lineup, they are involved. They turn into Jekyll and Hyde. Is a friendly game against that. It's unbelievable. So. Um, and that's with Hendo's problem. So you have to talk about that. He's my captain. Was my captain for seven and a half, nearly eight years. And I said I will. I I have to talk about that now because I don't want to wake up one morning and be two knock horns with each other just because you thought you will start and I tell you you will not. Um, and that what obviously in Hendo's ear and mind came on. Okay, he doesn't want me here. And. Uh, I understand it one hundred percent, but we clarified that. But anyway, what he said is, if I would have told him, Hendo, stay here, you will be the main man in midfield, stuff like this. Hendo would have stayed. That's the truth. That's one hundred percent the truth. But I couldn't say that. As much as I wanted him to stay, I couldn't say that. And that's why it was better that Hendo moved on. So that's it. And um, there's nothing, not not a bit, not a, of bad blood or whatever. He is. The captain of the of the most successful team this club saw in the Premier League era. So and for me and, and rightly so. And he was a sensation. He's a sensational player and everything. Only the best. And when he comes here, from my point of view, he gets a real farewell. Everything. So there's nothing to misunderstand from that point of view. One hundred percent. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, again, can I just ask? Yeah. What are the qualities that in Ryan Gravenberg that that made you want to bring him to Liverpool? Because he, he's a player you've been linked with for. Fairly lengthy period of time. I wouldn't want to choose one. To be honest, it's just it's a, the package is really interesting. He's a he's a he's good in small spaces, and that's now really special. Good in big spaces as well. So he can accelerate with the ball. 
He can really drive the ball. He um, has a really good overview, has a good pass, a good shooter. The full week training now. Everybody said before, and he knows that, so he's a really skilled boy. He always was. 18, with 18, he played. When he moved to Bayern, he had already more than 100 games at Ajax, so that's not a, a usual career until then. But everybody would have said, ah, defensively, the, he can make the next step 100%. But I see that he, he wants that. He got that 100%. So when he's really in that, um, it's working extremely hard. It's, it's obviously really nice for him having, OK, Cody only arrived yesterday, I think, but having um, Virch and Cody around. Um, but it's the same age group like most of the boys now, and um, it's really cool having him. So he's a good, good guy. Um, and a player with massive potential. And I don't know where it will end up. Um, he has to fit in what we are doing, but he, he will. How long it will take, I don't know. We will see. But um, to, to reach, to get cl closer to his, um, to the peak. Um, but we will work on that. He's here for a long time, and I, I'm really happy that he's here and that we can start that. This fixture last season, Wolves at Molyneux, it maybe represented a real low point in last season, and, and you spoke after. We had game. a lot of low points. Yeah, but you spoke after the game about the players lacking confidence, and that did. Liverpool in I think it was February is so different to this Liverpool sort of seven months later. How have you been able to to bring about that change? I didn't remember that I said. I thought I said that after Brighton, but maybe I said it after Brighton as well, and. <laughs> after other games. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm not sure we proved already that we made a change or whatever. I, I think we showed a few really nice signs. I liked it as well. I like. I really like the Aston Villa game. I know how difficult this game usually is. And that day, we were really good. And that's cool. Early in the season, pretty much three days or two days after the transfer window closed when everybody's like, ah, but we should have, we should have. And then this team plays that kind of, it was a really good one. Um, but are we stable already? I don't know. Let's see. We will be miss players eh, for, for the game tomorrow. So key players for us, obviously, do we have to prove that we can replace them, that we still can play football, that we can still. So we build a team, not, we, 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 it's not that we have build a team or did it now during the preseason or whenever we started with a slightly different system. We are in that process. And it, yes, we had key moments going our direction. Will all key moments go in our direction? Unfortunately, probably not. Um, but winning with 10 men helps to create a spirit and, and, and the mentality. Um, but only if you use it. Because you can, even these opportunities, you can let's slip through your fingers and then you feel, how was it again? I forgot it, what we had to do. So. It's still early days and we have to build a team and I'm really happy with the basis we can work from. Said before the Aston Villa game, I, I, when I stand in the dressing room and look at the team, I really, really love this team and it's early days. And I really think it's easy for people to love this team as well. So that's all what we need because we cannot, and Liverpool never could, we cannot start loving a team when we want something. We have to do it before because then we own, that's the only chance we can win something. So. Um, Let's go for it and then we will see. But what we did is we changed a few things. We brought in new players. And maybe the ma for me, a big difference is so, and I said it to the players, obviously, that um, this is not my, it's not year eight, because I think in October, it's, uh, it's, I'm here eight years. This is year one of the new team. And that's exactly how we approach everything. Changed a lot of things. Brought in a few guys to give a interesting inside in their lives so it's just and and we want to become a new team and not the replica of the other team and uh, that's what we are working on so i'm fully in this is year one of whatever and not year eight of the good old past welcome Carl, you just you touched on it's nice not to be able to oh it's great yeah, yeah that's it's like in these movies <laughs> Um, some trends, fitness, just generally what's the state for the rest of the squad? Sorry? The, the, the rest of the squad? Yeah. Right. Um, Thiago is running, but that's it. Um, Ibu trained since two days. 
Two days? Yeah, two days with the team. Um, who else? I didn't see him yet. So, what, but we had obviously contact, and they said, "Yeah, it's fine, it's fine." So, um, but we will see that now um, to make there a couple of decisions. Um, double, but she should be fine. Sorry. What did he have? I didn't see any. Oh, okay. No, that was uh, he trains the full week with us, so that is was then obviously enough time to rest. Um, Stefan had a good camp with the U21s, played only a few minutes, but helped him anyway. Um, no, I think that's it. I think oh, we didn't forget anybody. That would be really bad. Goalie. No, all good. Yeah, and just on Trent, considering the role he's performed for this side for the last six months, how much has him not being there changed? Dynamic, in terms of what dynamic, not so much. We have to be there flexible, even with trend. I think if you look the, watch the game against Villa really um, in detail, you will see that he was not, was not fixed in any midfield role, inside role. We have to we have to be flexible there, and that's exactly how we will how we will do it. Um, yeah, but if you find, if you know another passer like Trent, um, tell me. Who can play this? This who can play this position. It would be really cool, but it's it it must be fine. It will be fine. We have to adapt to the different skill set of the player. So, but the most the most important thing in this game again is defensive stability. That's all about. Then we can play. If you are not stable, you don't have to think about that. And that's why the last game again against Aston Villa. I think a lot of people were. Maybe not convinced about our last line, and then you saw Joe Gomez and, and, and Joel Mati performing on that level, which is um, they have that quality, and that's really cool. Um, so that was the key for the game. Plus, Alexis in front of them did really well. Um, so that we need defensive stability, and then we can play football from there. Jimmy, Jimmy last one for the breakout. Yeah, we just asked you about playing at twelve thirty on Saturday. Got six games at that slot last season. Serious with the question, or yeah. what, what, what do you mean? What, what is the difference when you play thirty hours ago in Bolivia? What do you think is the reason? Or you think it's that, that, that I didn't understand. Is that something about the time, or is it the lack of time well, between? Of, is it the lack of? Is it specifically playing at that time on a Saturday? That can be that's not a problem if you're a normal week. We always said that if you're a normal week, it's not a problem. For thirty, that's easy to adapt. The only problem is the lack of recovery time. So we have now we have four international breaks until March. Two of them we have already the twelve thirty kickoff. If I say a word about it, then the whole world goes again. Uh, 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 he starts moaning again. This is a joke. We have players in South America. I didn't see them yet. In twenty four hours we play. So, and this is a, but it's like it is. We cannot change that. We will never change that. Whatever you whoever we will talk to. Now they obviously the, the TV channel has now a different name, but um, that doesn't change obviously anything at all. Um, so they just don't give a bab uh, about that. So why should I didn't talk about it? We didn't think about it. Yeah, I'm in a moment. Somebody like you now gives me this feeling that is sitting there. And what's exactly the problem? Is it twelve thirty because it's lunchtime, or could it be the the, the lack of time between the games and the intensity of the travel and the Make your own opinion about it. Maybe this time without a source. Thank you, Welcome. Thank you.